Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are talking to Abby Miranda, who's the co-founder of Beige London, which is the most incredible underwear brand. If you haven't heard of them yet, you are going to be smitten after this conversation or during this conversation. I had been following them for a very long time before they joined the Women's Chapters members, and I'm absolutely delighted. Abby, it's a great honor to have you here with us today um, and to have this opportunity to hear more about your journey, but also the journey of Beja and what you have lined up for the future. So welcome. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here, everyone. I'm glad to see you all. Brilliant. Well, I would like to give you an opportunity to explain in your own words what makes Beja so special. Because as, an, as a very proud owner of a number of your pieces, I know why you're special, but I think it would be really good for everyone to hear it from you. So Beja is a lingerie brand. Um, what's different about Beja is our XYZ concept. So we split bra sizes into categories. So you've got your X category designed specifically for small cups, Y category for B to D, which is like your mid range cup size, and then double D to H. So that's our USP, um, what makes us different. But as an essence for the brand, like what, what makes us stand out is I think is our real realistic portrayal of women and, that, and how that comes across. Um, yeah, we launched in 2016. We've got a store in Cold Drops Yard and our products just really does stand out from the rest because it's just beautifully simple, fantastic fabrics, great fit and fuss free. That's how we like to see ourselves as a brand, fuss free. <laughs> and, I mean, you're the designer of, of all the lingerie. How did this concept come about? How did you identify this need in the market? And I mean, I think many of the women on the call today will, will totally agree that there was a need for that. Um, but you know, what gave you the, the impetus to go ahead and, and launch and start to fulfill that need? So it all sort of comes back to our family background. So me and my sister Maisie are the founders of Beja, but our family background is lingerie manufacturing. So we come from a long history of just being around the industry, lots of products. Um, it's my mum's and dad's business. They've been going for like nearly 40 years. Mm -hmm. And basically what they do is design and supply and manufacture for other brands. So growing up, we were just surrounded by, <laughs> by women's underwear, like really sexy stuff. But it wasn't like a sexual, sexual environment. It was really just fun, women, boobs, lot of laughs but yeah crotchless panties uh corsets bells <laughs> whistles all of that was just sort of part of our grow grew up around it which yeah. I think gave us a really good sensitivity and also like not such you know it's not so sexy it's just it is fun like when like that, there is that essence of that um but I feel like that gave us a real good background just to see where the spot in the market for Beja was and that was just really beautifully simple products really well done like there was such an overkill of just excess on the product and Maisie and I just really saw like that's just not what we're wearing that's not what our friends are wearing where is that lingerie that sort of sits back and matches with her outerwear which is neat it's clean it's modern we're not wearing frills and bells and laces on our outerwear so let's sort of marry what our customer is wearing on her outerwear with her underwear and that's where we sort of saw it and then in regards to our xyz concept that was just really important to us to design specifically for the cup size rather than making an A cup and an H cup the same bra. Like they really need different things, these women. They want the same aesthetic. They buy into the same things, but they do need different things from their bras. And that's just fundamental. But they are the same woman. They go to the same exercise class, same lifestyle, same jobs, but having really different lingerie experiences. So it was really key for us that that full cup like customer had a product that was cool and relevant and not grandma's bras and not pin up and 
cherries and leopard skin. Like she's not that person just because she's got great big boobs. She's the same as the rest of us and she wants that same look. So it was just key to us to like design for her as well. And was there a moment, I mean, were you sitting around the family dinner table or what was the kind of um, point at which you both went, right, we're going to do this? It was just the right time. It was sort of 2015. I'd been living in Brazil for a, a year or so, came back. A lot of like, it was sort of a recessionary period. A lot of the young independent laundry brands had sort of fallen by the wayside. The industry was changing, like department stores, that whole sort of structure was changing. Online shopping was growing and there wasn't a lingerie brand that could bring all of that together. So there was a spot for Beja and it was an, almost a feeling of like, we've got all of this backbone, this like powerhouse of fit and connections and experience mm -hmm. when it like now's the time like now or never and let's go for it and we and we did and you I mean you raised a really important point there about small brands falling by the wayside and obviously we've seen even more of that over the last two years and it's sad because they're good brands like good businesses yeah. and it's just really sad it's really sad but how have you weathered that storm because I mean, you obviously have a really strong digital presence and, and I know that you guys are machines in terms of what you do digitally and you have a really engaged community, but you also have a physical retail space, which, you know, as we all know, have been really hard hit over the last couple really? of years. You know, how, how, have, how have you managed that and what tools have you used to keep motivated and keep going? It's been really hard, Michelle, like it's been ruthless like just you just got to keep not be so emotional there's no time like you've got to move on quick you close the shop you open the shop you close it again you open it again like you clean it you deep clean it you take out all the stock you do all, put in all of the covid restrictions you take them all down and like that's just what it needs like you can i you know it is really upsetting but there's no time for that. You just got to get on with it. it. It will change again. And just sort of being comfortable with, you know, investing all of the effort, but also knowing this will be, you know, who knows what's going to be like in six weeks time. Let's just crack on. And I will say like our landlord has been incredible through it with the opening and closing. Our team has been like really adaptable, but it's been a rough ride, a really rough ride, but we're grateful for our amazing landlord and that we are small enough to be agile to have that hybrid online in-store work. Mm. Well, and do you think there've been advantages that have come out of this period for you as a, as a business? You know, have, do you think that you've you've been forced to look at new channels or to new ways of doing business because that traditional path? Absolutely. So little with obstacles. Online bra fittings is our Corona baby. Like we wouldn't have done that had we not been forced to. So we're grateful for that. Really mm -hmm. grateful. And in that first lockdown, sales just went crazy it was fantastic because there was all these women at home like, and there was a real appetite for online bra fitting which was just incredible and like I said like we were small enough just to start it like literally let's do it tomorrow and just did it and that's quite that agility is just really key for us at the moment yeah, yeah. I think I suppose historically something like lingerie would have typically not being what people would have bought online because they wouldn't have known especially from a brand they didn't know or a new brand because they wouldn't be they wouldn't know how they would size exactly um, and I mean I've had a physical bra fitting uh, with your team which was an absolute game changer for <laughs> me um, since I have been wearing the right bra size I constantly have people telling me that I look slimmer but it's, I think it's just because I've just been kind of held in in all the right places yeah. and, and so my clothes yeah, sometimes really like what women Amazing. come in what what they're wearing like it's just incredible like they're going about their day with just the most terrible bras like <laughs> terrible fit and just cracking on but then when they leave they look like it's so emotional because like the change is just so dramatic going 
if she comes in wearing like a 38B and she'll leave in a 30G, like it's so, you she literally skips out of the shop and it is just a joy. Yeah, That's like the best thing about lingerie, like just seeing that in a woman, like how for, it's so fulfilling seeing her mood lifted and like her perception of herself literally changing in front of your eyes is just such an honor. Yeah. Well, and I, I think it's really important and something that, that you do very well is that inclusive approach in terms of, you know, all different body shapes and sizes, because, you know, women are all different. Everybody is different. Mm. And I think that your range caters really well for that. And I love how you use real people in your campaigns. Can you tell me about that? Because, I mean, is there an opportunity for maybe someone on who's listening to you today Absolutely. to get involved as a model or... <laughs> always it's partly like our customer just loves it so it's like our friends it's our family it's yeah we just it's yeah people our customers just emailing in being like I want to have a go I'll bring my mum I've got my, my flatmates will come along even on like a, one of the last shoots we did one of the girls she just brought along her friend who got her underwear in her underwear and started shooting her it's an amazing thing and it's such a great space and I feel like you can feel that in the imagery so when those when we do those sh photo shoots it's so healing like that space of just yeah. you're we're you know everyone's in their underwear and they are comparing each other but in a pos positive way mm. like Jesus like you know her ass is way bigger than mine, but she <laughs> looks absolutely incredible. Or like her boobs are up here, mine are down here, but I look great in this bra. Yeah. So it's like a, it is a comparison, but it's like a positive, a positive one because you can see, yeah, she looks fantastic and she's confident and she's, you know, two sizes bigger or two sizes smaller than me. And she looks amazing. And then that just boosts your own confidence. And then we all feel it like the whole shoot, everyone there is just so lifted because it's that women admiring women when we're so familiar with comparing in quite a negative way. Yeah. And I think uh, you can see that in the pictures and that's why the community wants to get involved. Mm. Yeah, we love yeah, that. No, I mean, I think definitely looking at the, the way that you present your brand, the way it's positioned, it's very uplifting. And I'm sure inspires many women to invest in pieces for themselves because they deserve to. And exactly. that you don't need to have the typically what we've seen underwear models looking like. You don't need to look like that to wear something that's comfortable, but also beautiful and makes you feel good. Um, yeah, I feel you that, all deserve like, that. Like that. Like I. I don't know why, but we just feel like a real responsibility to heal that because that is mm. that was damaging and it is damaging that like overly glossy, overly thin, overly sexualized. Like that was not healthy. Like I feel real responsibility to like change that for our daughters and like we need to see more variety. Otherwise, you just feel like bad about yourself. Now tell me about what Beja means, because I think this is a really cool story. <laughs> well, Beja means kiss in Portuguese. Um, my husband is Brazilian. And when we started the brand, we were, you know, just fresh from Brazil. And it's a sweet word with a nice meaning. And also as a graphic, it's like, it's just a nice, it fits nicely as a yeah. font and how it works is really nice. Um, but yeah, it means kiss in Portuguese. And your and your sub mark? Oh, and our logo. Little, so our brand stamp is like a yeah. triangle with a line, and that is a symbol for Yoni, which is a vulva. So it's a cute little, it's like a cute little shape, and it really represents like modern femininity to mm -hmm. us. It's neat, it's simple it's sharp it's not like that traditional like red velvet like <laughs> perception of like women's yeah. sexuality like no it's it's also this yeah. and I think I mean also when I look at that I think it's 
because it surprised me that that's what it symbolized when I when I read this this, this backstory but actually it's very powerful it is in its simplicity it's powerful I love it like when I see it on my brow or like my pants I just feel like it's sort of like you're winking at yourself it's just like a yeah. nice little girl power symbol but <laughs> you know like subtle and how important have collaborations been for you I mean I know you've got a new range coming out called Trist so Trist has just launched uh-huh. um, our goal this year and going forward as best we can is to really go hard on the dead stock fabric angles. So over recycled fabrics, which actually have quite a big minimum, which means you have to buy quite a lot of the roll, okay. which we're not quite, we can't, we're not there yet for buying that much. But what we do is reach out to all of our suppliers and say like what have you got what is ready to be cooked like what have you got on rolls what colors have you got what's just literally in the warehouse waiting to be made into something or waiting to go into a landfill or you know all of these things because so much fabric does get wasted for lots of reasons like the color might be a shade off or it might be a little bit of a looser than what it should be so all of these sort of things that are just sort of intrinsic to each role Beja is really fortunate just to be able to swoop in and buy those roles and then turn it into a into a range the only negative is if the range does really well you can't do it you can't have a top up <laughs> oh I guess but, but, then, like but then I suppose that incentivizes people to, you know, if, if they love it, to buy a couple of them or to yeah, exactly. know that it is limited and it's using using up fabrics that ultimately could land up on landfill. Yeah. Um, so you you get to give them or get to give that fabric a new lease of life, I guess, in, yeah, in your exactly. wardrobe and under your garments. Yeah, that's what we do. What about from a personal perspective, you as a businesswoman, what's in your toolkit for how you manage adversity or challenge? Um, I found it really key to have a bunch of founder friends, people that really understand it and like how emotional it is and um, how hard the work is but how important it is as well and like how meaningful it is and just have those people around me it was I didn't have that and now I do and the impact has just been dramatic I like forcefully sort those people because it's if you're like some of your friends they just don't get it they're just like why so stressed I'm like you you don't know (laughs) why I need to know I need to hang out with some people that do know it and that's been really key for me also like working mum friends as well like I've sought them out and it's improved my life by having those women around me because I didn't and now I do and it's better (laughs) people that just get it they just get it and that's been really helpful for me and also like part of my toolkit is my mum because yeah when I when we first started and I didn't have those people around me I'd be like no one understands like how mad this is no one understands how important this is or how hard the sacrifices you have to make are but how valid that you know how there is no choice sometimes there's no choice and then I was like actually I've got my mum my mum is that person like I need to talk to her about it and like and she's been amazing just really understands like and really sympathetic to that mum on the run yes like how hard it is and she's been amazing do you think generationally because obviously she's run her own business too um are there differences differences like compared to what it was like when she first started your family oh absolutely I remember we'd go you have yeah like holidays we'd go to wherever she was visiting a factory and we would be in the reception of the hotel waiting for faxes. Like I remember that all of our holidays would be that waiting for. But I feel like what's different is because I because you're on because my work is on my phone and emails. It's like it's more constant. Mm. She would if she was un, unavailable or, or unable to 
like if people couldn't get her, they just couldn't get her. So there would be a bit more of a break. Whereas now, because of the phone thing, yeah. there is no let up. Um, but you just got to be strict with that. <laughs> I think it's the same. But then also, I think what's good about having my mum is she had quite higher expectations for herself and felt more guilt whereas I can see the impact of that and I'm just like I'm not gonna do that <laughs> like she would feel that oh well, you guys missed out because I was so busy or you guys missed out because I wasn't those mums that drank coffee after the school run and she beats herself up about that whereas I've just like chosen mm. I won't do that I'm super busy I can't do that and that's all right yeah. <laughs> like it's fine but isn't the irony that, I mean, even she says that, that she probably, if she had been one of those mums, would have been wishing that she had something else. So it's it's kind of, we, exactly. we do lay a lot of guilt on ourselves. And yeah. ourselves up. However, um, often the grass isn't greener on the other side or, you know, that, that we would still find something to feel exactly. guilty about. To feel guilty um, about. So I think that's a really refreshing attitude, actually, is to kind of say you've chosen this. Yeah um and and if it's something that makes you happy and fulfilled and and you know that's really important for you as a role model um as you said for for young women coming up through the ranks and and I think part of what Beja is doing um you know it's a move it's a movement mm. for women to feel accepted right from when they're young girls and to see actual real role models um and and the different shapes and sizes and looks that they come in no. yeah it's so important like variation is mm. key because then you just you just feel so much better about yourself and yeah. like honesty as well like yeah. that's so important and what what advice would you give to your younger self so if you were if you were doing this again because obviously you've been running since 2016 is there anything you would have done differently or you know advice that you would give to yourself learn excel I would have said that <laughs> could <laughs> literally like my most used app on my phone is my calculator like that is poor and it like excel would have been really key that's yeah. what I'd say and also maybe don't worry so much but that's still my advice to myself now is like it's always fine in the end and yeah. I kind of kind of sometimes spoil it for myself by worrying so much so that's what I would say and is, I mean, in terms of kind of your plans for the future, what's the vision for Beja? And I, I hate that question about, you know, what's your five-year plan or whatever, but what's your ultimate vision? Where do you see this being one day? I want it to be like a global brand. So the online booking calendar will be open 24 hours and there'd be bra fitters speaking different languages, different territories. And each of those bra fitters would have communities within their country of the their women beige girls all of the online orders coming out from one distribution center and it's just turning over a big volume of orders for all for all over the world like that's my goal and then a nice conscientious retail footprint keep like a few key wholesale partnerships no not beige shops on every high street like that's not my goal at all mm. um it's that yeah like a fully booked calendar of online bra fittings and just big volume orders that's like my goal like keep it tidy so grow scale yeah. but not make it scrambled with that like keep the efficiency and our model but just scale it in terms of volume of orders that's really really exciting it is exciting. I can see it. I just, just need to get there. <laughs> you mentioned community. How have you gone about building your community? Because for any brand starting out and growing, I think over the last two years, even more so people have realized the power and importance of having an engaged community. How have you gone about building that? Do you have any tools that you would recommend to people that are listening today around how to kind of really... Build. it's not like for me like it's not just a word it actually is my community like the models are my friends like the copywriter is my like that like, is friends the the mod um it is friends if we're doing a partnership with a brand in store that will be a friend of one of the team so mm. it starts like that and then that just makes it more authentic because 
you're not just saying that like, we are an international community of like-minded women no, no this is my community this mum this model looks after my kids like it is a community and it just then it's authentic and it grows like that because she then feels part of the community then she draws her friends in and that's how we're growing mm. and do you there. have an idea i mean how how many beige women are they out there oh <laughs> the thing is though like there is still this there's a huge portion of women that do love like the dress up and the stockings and the corsets and like they look amazing and like more power to them that is a huge market of you know sexy women but then there is a huge huge market for women that just want a decent well-fitting well-made bra and she doesn't want to go to Marks and Spencer. Like she's not going to buy any of her outerwear for Marks and Spencer. Why is she having to buy her bras there? Mm -hmm. And again, because of the nature of the UK market sort of changing, there has been so many closures of the department stores. Where is she going to go? Well, she's going to come to Beja, hopefully. Well, when she knows about us, that's yes. that's the market. Like she's she's an everyday woman. Like yeah, uh, well, and I, I think that. Um, that department store experience has become quite stale, hasn't it? Yeah. And if it wasn't already now over lockdown and, you know, that you would walk around what, what probably would have been the kind of place that your mum would have taken you to get your first bra. Um, you walk around now and they just sort of patchy rails here and there with a few, you know, not a lot of stock, no one really to give you good advice. There might be one lady that's worked there for yeah. 10 years who does all the fittings and, and, you know, but I, I think that experience really needed a, a revamp. A buying revamp, a bra exactly. needed to be brought into the modern day. Um, and the and retailers that are doing it, you can tell, like they know it's getting stuffy in there. So there, mm -hmm. there is, you know, the, the retailers that are still, you know, trying, you can see when they are, because it, like you say, it, is a, it has got a bit old fashioned, a bit fusty. I mean, everything post not, not like COVID, there's a feeling for like a mood for like, let's come back, but better, not just yeah. go back to where we were. Let's not just rebuild that. Like even for our campaign for spring, summer, 2020, 2022, it's like, let's remake, not rebuild. Let's redo it. What is it going to look like post pandemic better than what it was before? Cause we don't want, no one wants to go back. We need to like, move on with these learnings which is really exciting um yeah and what about price point how how would you see yourselves in the market i mean for someone who maybe hasn't been onto your website yet and hasn't had a look and hopefully you will all do that yeah um what what how would you position yourself so we are affordable luxury it's under a hundred pounds for a set which is key for beige it means our friends can stretch to it and other women it's just chuck it in the basket like it's a good price point that gives us a margin enough that we can ship internationally and mm. we can do a like discount it just gives a, it's it's a price point we believe in because it also justifies the workmanship that goes into it like bras are a tricky product to make like the women that sew them it, it's a real skill that's not two for 12 pounds like this is a, you know, a really well-made product. We do use fantastic fabrics. And also like the pound is, that we spend, like invest, like think of it as investment in things that you believe in. Like, do you believe in young, like women's business, supporting women, like startups or whatever, but like every pound you spend, like is a choice of where you're going to invest it. And that again, it's like, it is a bit of a stretch for some people, but it's worth it because of, you know, not just the product, but also what you're investing in. Mm. And I mean, how did you learn to design bras? Was that through growing up in the family? Yeah, business? absolutely. So oh, always, so I worked like a few years for them, like, but yeah, just always being around it, I would do like um sample sales so they'd have like so much stock so I'd just do like weekend big invite all my friends everyone come get a, you know sample sales basically yeah. clearing out old warehouse stuff but even that was interesting like that what people would gravitate to would be the simple stuff so it'd be like 
the mock-ups made in all black when it was going to be all leopard skin but the, the designs that people would gravitate to were the simple ones and I think I just sort of picked up on that yeah. wearable not that like dressing up element like you don't want to scamper off to the loo and put on your sexy outfit no you just need to be like feeling great in your underwear in the morning through to the evening yeah that's really key well do you think that's a societal thing though that we that we have this idea that in order to be sexy we need to to wear those kinds of things yeah um, and, yeah and I mean certainly I think your ranges challenge that because they're they're feminine and they're strong but they're still very sexy yeah they um, are and so, I mean, I, I love that there isn't any of that typical, what you would see, you know, red bows and leopard print yeah, and all yeah. that kind of thing, because it does challenge this idea that what we've grown up with seeing as sexy or, you know, if you were going to buy sexy, sexy lingerie for your honeymoon or whatever, mm. that it would look like that. But actually, um, it could be a really comfortable set that you also wear to work. Like, yeah. 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 Um, I think that as well comes back to like a lifestyle's changing. Like we don't want excess in our lives. Like maybe it is getting older, but we don't want a drawer full of special occasion stuff. Like even like post pandemic, all of these high heels, like it's kind of different now. Like we don't I think people are more savvy about what's actually in their lives. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's been beneficial to Beja as well, because it's that every day like we want to be the brand that she puts on every morning and to feel good to make her clothes look better not saved for special occasions yeah no I think that's really important and I agree with you totally that that's been a, there's been a massive shift from a consumer perspective to think about you know rather invest in something that you can that makes you feel good and you can enjoy every day than having things in your cupboard that yeah you know you've got to wait two years to wear them because yeah. you can't go anywhere um, and wearing good, comfortable underwear that also looks beautiful, something that you can do every day. Mm, you raised something interesting, and, and, and my question is actually because I don't really know, in terms of how a bra is made, I mean, is each one made individually? There's no kind of mass production process for that, is there? The mass production process would be, so when, so you do the sketch, then you make the paper patterns, so you tend to make it in like a 34B, and then a 36F, and then you grade that pattern up so you make it fit the sizes. Once that pattern is complete, that's then put into a computer, and there is an element of mass production on the cutting. So there'll be like a big stamper that will stamp out the... Okay. But, you know, if it's a small run, you will get people with their little cutting blades cutting out each pattern piece. And for the trickier pattern pieces, yeah, you'll still get that. But there is one, you know, big mass, boom, and it cuts it all out. But once it's all cut out, it goes onto the line and then it is all sewn by women, I'm guessing. Women. And, well, and men as well. But yeah, like okay. hand sewing machines passed on to the next bit. They'll do the next process. But that's like a, so a, that's a cut and sew bra. So that's like your traditional three-part cut, seams, elastic when you go into like molded and bonded bras so those are like your t-shirt bras that are sort of like coney molds mm -hmm. or if you have a knicker that's got a bonded edge so it's like got no sewing it's just glue oh right that's more mass mass project like oh. more mass production -y because it's just like a big line of big machinery <laughs> and you don't do any molded cups do you no not yet we can't get um I just can't the fit's not as good hmm. it's just not as good like your boobs will tend to be sort of a coney shape but some women feel more protected in those styles like because their nip there is your nipples are sort of more covered it's a bit more the shape is already there it's not the shape of your boob like you're just sort of slotting into the shape that's already there um but it's getting what we try to hold the customer's hand through it's like be comfortable with your shape like you don't need a t-shirt bra under a t-shirt wear your little lace bra show the just like shape of your breast and it's all right people mm -hmm. just need to get over it it's just it's just that step that you need to take yeah and then there's also a bit of like worry about like if your nipples get erect through then then she can feel um not what not like she just feel a bit yeah conscientious of them yeah 
but then also it's like yeah some of our customers are like ceos having to go to do like presentations in front of 500 blokes yeah she can't she doesn't want to go on the stage <laughs> and then our nipples get erect like yeah i get that as well like that's yeah. fair enough <laughs> It's really interesting, actually, you said that because I, I worked in the city for, for many years and um, and I always just wore beige T-shirt bras. Yeah. You know, because I think I was really afraid of attracting attention, I guess. I don't know. I'm, subconsciously, I don't think it was a conscious thing, but it was that sort of idea that I needed to be, you know, a professional demure, not show anything, not. Um, whereas as I've got older, I, I mean, I don't wear any molded cups anymore um I think that's just like that strength in femininity and stepping into that like I am a feminine these are my breasts they are soft and stepping into the power with that like not mm. just being real like that I think that's part of growing up but also I think women younger women are getting that earlier yes absolutely which is a really good mm. Yeah, because I, I, I don't think I had very much confidence at all around the underwear that I wore, which is such a shame because actually that was when I was probably <laughs> physically in my in my prime and should have been walking around in amazing underwear. Um, and and yet, I, I, you know, there was that sense that you needed to be respectable, you know, mm. especially when you went to work um, and that somebody might notice you were wearing a red bra. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I think I agree with you, younger women today are, I think, far more open minded when it comes to mm. undergarments and, and lingerie. Yeah. Um, which is exciting and great for brands like yours. So yeah, that you great for brands. Have like your favorite that. bras in all different colors. <laughs> um, we actually had a question um, Why in this day and age are bras bought not suitable for most women? Why in this day and age are bras? Or not suitable for most women i'm not sure what that means um i suppose maybe that means why are most bras not really like yours where um, <laughs> where they don't have the real woman in mind learning english well yeah. just need to be conscientious with the real women as well because like even if you're a glamour model with a big fake boobs you're still a real woman as well is it like, yeah like, absolutely you know, I said yeah that like even yeah the supermodels they are real women the same as the rest of us um but for in terms of product I think there is more like the softer cut bras like our American customers are mad for beige because they literally don't all they are sold in the U.S. is the foam padded molded push-up or yeah t-shirt bras and that's literally all they have so when they come to beige or go to you know france like parisian underwear like it's it's a joy for them because it isn't something they see common yeah to yeah. them so we're about i mean you've obviously expanded globally which um is amazing has that been helped by the pandemic and that kind of focus on there being no barriers really now to, to where people are located in the world. Because I think in the in in the old retail days, it was very much this idea that you you kind of went somewhere and bought something. Whereas now the whole world has opened up in terms yeah. of what's accessible to you. Has that aided the growth of Beja absolutely from an international perspective? Absolutely. And you can see little clouds of orders. So we've got a customer in Singapore. And like around her is growing customers because she's talking to her friends. Oh. She's an English lady with big boobs living in Singapore, really hot and sweaty over there. She was saying to us, and yeah, like emailed her, like, hi. And she said, Yeah, like it's really tropical over here. Like, I I got great big boobs and I just don't want a padded bra. I just want something like soft and thin but supportive. So yeah. She's a great customer. And then around her, you can see clouds of orders because we just feel like she's probably chatting. But there is that global element, which is, again, it's really freeing as a modern brand because you're not trapped into this like spring, summer, autumn, winter cycle because that's just mm. old fashioned as well. Like it's we're glo if it's spring, if it's summer here, it's winter in Australia. And that needs to be considered as yeah, a global yeah. brand. So what advice would you have to anyone that might be listening today on how, you know, if they were thinking of expanding into other markets? I mean, how were you discovered by those 
consumers in different places like do you, can you yeah. put it down to one particular channel instagram and seo okay so she typically for us she will a customer with bigger breasts will search for lightweight non-padded bra h cup and then beige's goal is to be that bra that she discovers mm. and then also via instagram yeah it's global isn't it i've i've yeah by loads of different brands in different countries our goal is just to be a real like as best we can is just transparent about like the shipping and all of that aspect because that's the number one query that she'll have to yeah. put her off from buying from us for our international customers but yeah just instagram and then seo i think for like brilliant and and really understanding your market i guess because that's been so clear from everything that you've spoken about today is you know you have a really really crystal clear idea as to who the beige woman is and what she wants um, yeah i find it really mean. hard to have a business that i couldn't relate to in that sense do you know what i mean like if you just set yeah. up a yeah like a, i don't know it's, I, it's so important because it gives you so much like backbone and essence and understanding if you really do love the product and love the customer and love the why yeah without that I would have run out of petrol like years ago. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's, you know, it's fundamental, but it's often overlooked that really aligning your passion with your purpose, yeah. letting that shine through in absolutely everything that you do. You know, mm. we did a masterclass with Emmy Faust yesterday and she spoke a lot about that. Just, you know, one of the, the main checkpoints for your marketing strategy, your content strategy, everything that you do around your brand is make sure that your message is super, super clear and people understand your purpose from every single engagement they have with you or every brand touch point. Mm. Um, and I, and I, th I think, you know, you, it's something that you and Maisie do really, really well, but it's also something that I think for some brands is quite hard to achieve. Yeah, I do um, as well. Mm. And it can get quite diluted as the brand grows as well. Yes. You get more and more people and mm. that's hard to control as well. Yeah. So I know, I know you were saying this the other day during one of our masterminds that you still, between the two of you, write your emails and your correspondence. Do you think that's something that you will keep doing as the brand grows or is that something this that is you a point have to of relinquish contention. some control? <laughs> this is a point of contention at the moment because Maisie and I are so busy. So if the team is waiting on us for a copy, it's not yeah it, it can't it's not sustainable so there is an element of yet yeah, that bit a portions of it has to be handed over but it still needs to be you know come from us mm -hmm. but as the output increases as the volume increases like is that sustainable we just work around it and make it you know part of yeah we're all involved we all get stuck in all over each other's jobs like that's the fun of it yeah but it needs to be efficient as well <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we love doing our it's our number one like for sales our emails are the best our loyal customers the repeat purchasers just we live and die by those women because they just keep buying which is such a so good for our ego like it, it fits and she'll buy it again like it doesn't need a load of you know marketing spend to t get another sale mm -hmm. out of her yeah because she just wears the bras she's chucked out all of our other bras like she's amazing that repeat purchaser well and and that's a lot more sustainable anyway isn't it to buy something that you know fits you um and then you can have it in every different color or exactly. you know, or fabric if you want but ultimately you're own you're buying just what you need and you know yeah. the works for you rather than seeing something that you think looks nice buying it and never wearing it because yeah. it's, it's not right for you i mean I think we probably are all guilty of having items like that in our drawers yeah. and our wardrobes. Absolutely. Um, well, we, we've come to the end of our session. Is there anything that you wanted to share with us that I haven't asked you or we haven't chatted about? Um, what would I like? We, just to check out Beja, have a bra fitting online or come to our store in King's Cross. Like, we'd love to meet you um, or bring customer service for fit advice, whatever. But just check out our brand, get to know us and... We're doing a Galentine's party in the store next Thursday, which oh, is always maybe. fun. Um, but yeah, just join the gang. <laughs> yeah, we need to promote that on Women's Chapter, actually. We'll um, share okay. your social yeah, posts around that. I'm a big fan of Galentine's Day. Oh, I am as well. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> 
she just wants a prosecco and to get like try on some brands with her mates. Like that, yeah. once the drinks are open, it's just so fun. It oh. really is. And and anyone that's joined us today, if you are in or around Cold Drops Yard, please do pop in because it's a beautiful store space. Um, they've got a really cool glass floor. Which, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I have to say that it's been an absolute life changer for me. And I didn't think in my 40s that I would feel so good in my underwear and change how I feel in my clothes. So um, if, you know, online or in store, check out Beja, have a look, tell your friends. Um, because I think I had, I was going to a women's chapter event just after I'd been to the store and I literally wanted to show everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's the best thing about the industry. Like women chat. And we yeah. are, we get intimate and Beja is so fortunate to be in that because it is a joy. Yeah. Like there isn't really any other products that women are like that with, which is mm. just, it's just such a privilege to be in this industry. And I think another key point in this, this might resonate for others is that I don't know of any other underwear brand, lingerie brand where you can buy the bra that you get to actually talk to the person who designed it. Um, and I, I love that, that you are so scalable as a business and you will be, you know, all over the world. And you and I have no doubt you will have, you will achieve that vision of having bra fittings 24 mm. seven. Um, but that there is a real woman, there are real women behind this. Yeah. Um, and, and I think for me, that's just, I love the idea that I get to be a part of your story. Oh, that's so, so nice to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and a massive thanks to everyone who's joined us. Um, oh, Kenza said, ah, oh, she said, I came to the store yeah. last week and my experience was so incredible. I just want to say thank you for this brand. It's been life changing. Oh, that's, and that's so nice. Uh, Kenza, you'll have to send Abby that as a testimonial. Yeah, it's so nice to hear. Literally, like that's what keeps us going is the DMs or the little customer reviews. It's just heartbreaking. Like how... Yeah, like Ken said, it's life changing. Like it can be to have the great fitting bra and then, you know, just love your bod. It's so yeah, nice. yeah. Well, I think I even sent you some pictures of myself in my yeah. space. <laughs> I felt so inspired. And we've got Karen saying her next bra with Beja. Karen, you will love them. I promise you. You've got to pop in and go and see Abby um, if she's around. But otherwise, uh, who the lady that d does the fittings in the store? Anita, she's amazing. Um, yeah, she's literally, brilliant. like the first day she started. The next day she was getting five star reviews, Google yeah. reviews. Like it was, I was like, literally we just started. <laughs> like this is incredible. And you know, I have to say from a customer services perspective, I called her and spoke to her because I had bought I had bought two bras in one particular style and I wanted to buy one of the others. And I called her and asked her what size mm. I would be if I changed style. Mm. And she remembered me. She said straight away, This is what what you'll be. I ordered it online and it was perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. She's great. So what what a refreshing experience. So thank you so much, Abby, for everything um, you've done for, for women and, and giving us uh, helping us to unlock our strength. I don't like the word empowered. Um, no, no, no. but but um to to harness the power within. So thank you very much for sharing everything with us today. All right. And um, I'm looking forward to the next women's chapter IRL event. I'm, I'm, it's really yeah, nice. yeah. We um I'm working very hard on in-person ones. It's a bit of a scary space at the moment, but um I think hopefully as time goes on, we'll return to some sort of new normal where we'll be able to actually meet each other and network. Absolutely. Really I can smell it. I can smell the, <laughs> <laughs> the atmosphere. Oh well, All right. thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for joining us, everyone. This will be recorded and we will send you a note to let you know when it's up on the website. So if you want to share it with anyone. But also do engage with Beja. They have an amazing Instagram feed. So get in touch with them. Um, like and share. Lots of Bye love, everyone. everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Abby. Bye.